Hey everybody, this is Josh, just popping in here at the beginning of the episode to let you know that we now have a Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash yet. There you'll find a bunch of cool tiers that you can subscribe and help support the show with. Uh, some of the benefits include a shout out in every episode for your social media, small business, online store, whatever. Uh, we also have um, opportunities to join our Discord fan server and chat with the cast. Uh, We also have um, access to uh, full unedited um, sessions, so you can hear everything that we do over the course of the three to four hours that we record. Um, It's a lot of fun, so be sure to check that out. That's patreon.com slash are we dead yet? All right, let's get to the show. Sinister Secrets and Dark Truths mystical creatures and magical powers, dark dungeons and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? And this room is now cleared of enemies. Uh, you've got, looks like, four statues that haven't been broken yet. But why would we break those open? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so the next guy doesn't have to deal with uh, Gru's. And they, they could have more gnomes in them. Who knows? Could have more gnomes in them. For XP, John. For XP. I, 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 I guess so. Speaking of gnomes, while I'm invisible... I would like to uh, inspect the pockets of these people that we've just met. <laughs> oh Hell my god! Yeah. <laughs> how, how long does invisibility last? Up to one hour. Fuck. Okay. And it only ends if I attack or cast a spell. <laughs> so, with a stealth roll of twenty-two, I'm gonna tippy toe <laughs> my way around and check out their pockets. <laughs> We're going to be millionaires right. by the end of this. <laughs> um, okay, I guess Everest well, will, uh, will thank them and greet them. So Bones is laying on the ground unconscious uh, <laughs> after oh, having his, about that. Uh, his arcane focus explode on him. Artie, do you rush over to your boss first and see what how he's doing? or That is my go-to, yes. Run over there and ask if anyone knows any healing, and then kind of check them out to see if there is any healing that can be done to them. Yeah, Everest is going to run up and check him out. Is he, like, dead? Is he uh, rolling? He, he literally looks like he just, like, got knocked out from, like, the sheer, the sheer shock of an, something exploding in his face. Like, he doesn't look oh, dead. Okay. He doesn't look like he's about to... It took it took about half his HP that blast, but um, he's still there. You know. And how you, how about the other guys? They're they're not damaged. No, Ar- Artie I think took like five damage that whole battle. <laughs> uh, right what on. was it? Four, four damage. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm just gonna give him a one silver, and if he looks like he's just unconscious, I'm gonna kind of just grab him by the shirt and shake him awake. Hey, boss, you can't be sleeping on the job now. Oh, oh shit, what? Oh, is, is it over? Well, it depends if these uh, these uh, folks here are still the good guys or if we got some more fighting to do. Uh, yes, um... You're what? Hal? <laughs> is that your voice? Yeah, that's... That's uh, my little kobold voice. Your little stitch voice? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was a tiny one. Yeah, you're not alone in that group. Um, <laughs> we have taken it upon ourselves to figure out what happened after the Coliseum in the middle of District 53 uh, kind of blew up with giant monsters. 
do I know anything about this? No, this happened uh, while you were while stuck I was in the in statue. statue. Perfect. Oh, sorry. I, uh, I haven't really quite heard anything about that. I've spent the last few days uh, playing statue, as you could tell. Aye, I think Storms, you did. Don't know what we'd do without you. I just happy to help, happy to fight. And so, uh, who who were these guys? Don't really know. <laughs> we're not hundred percent sure, but they were they're trying to summon some father god person that and will he, do bad things. And he was yeah. going and he was going on and on about summoning I, the I, I father to was, destroy the city. It's like some uh some like cult stuff, if you know what I mean. Oh, absolutely. So we we'd figured we'd take care of him. Josh, do I know anything about that? So you know that like there's definitely a lot of heightened. So I'll, I'll I'll tell you what you know is that you know that in the lead up to the celebration of the 300th anniversary of Binding Magic, there was a lot of heightened security, specifically around like District 73 the main seat of power in the city uh, where like the whole council of high priests meets and stuff. And there was supposed to be some huge event that was going to take place there. And there were rumors that there was going to be some sort of attack during the, the, the celebration. So you might be connecting these two events together. Okay. But when they bring up, like they're going to summon a, some sort of father person that sounds just alien foreign. Cool. Uh, yeah, then I'm going to turn to my boss and be like, Hi, you got any idea what they're talking about? Um, you, the, the boss kind of stands up, kind of shakes his head a little bit. And it's just like, uh, um, yeah, uh, so, so this place, obviously these guys are some kind of high level magic users. We were, we were investigating a, uh, you know, some suspicious magic going on over in district three. So, uh, I think, uh, I think I think all this might be connected. Uh, we definitely need to uh, report this back to uh, <coughs> to the head of the Mage Guild herself. Well, we are in the middle of a castle underground, so uh, we should finish exploring this place to make sure there aren't any other bad guys or really big rituals going on. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a I think that's a great idea. Um, you guys do that. I'm gonna get back up up topside and report and probably try and bring in some more. Uh, Mage Guild members, because this is definitely something we need to uh, get a handle on. He turns to you, Artie, and he says, Artie, I want you to go with them and help them uh, explore the rest of this place. Uh, we're going to go topside, Silverus and I, meet back up with Meluin, and we'll try to uh, we'll try to bring in some reinforcements here, because this is definitely a, uh, a class 5 fuck-up on the scale of uh, <laughs> magic abuse. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, can, do you think you can handle that, Artie? Uh, no worries, boss. I'll try to save a couple for you by the time you get back. No promises, though. Uh, that's that's all I can ask of you. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be back soon, guys. Sure. Well, thanks. Thanks for the hand, guys. Thank you. Um, and uh, John, I sent you a message of what you got off of. Uh, these yep. guys um, I, while you were invisible. I did. I took it all. What do we get? A lot of stuff. <laughs> Some I want to know. Tell me. Or just send it to me. I want to know. Um, you sneaky, sneaky fucks. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning into the whole he's invisible thing, so it'll definitely... Uh, you definitely wouldn't... No one else would know what he has. So yeah, so you have uh, the mage uh, dead in, in a pile of ashes. Just his robes are left. Uh, in this room, uh, you're now just here with this uh, newcomer, this gnome, standing in front of you. I would like to investigate the robes before the John can, and just because all he's going to do is steal from it and not actually investigate anything. Oh, wait, what are you doing that though? Yeah, why would you do that, Sherman? Um, because I want to figure out why that what we possibly can from this guy since we can't question him because he's dead in a pile of ashes but his robe is still there my bad (laughs) I was gonna say yeah if he doesn't I do (laughs) if he doesn't or maybe he's got like a journal or some like obvious 
here's my my evil plot plan. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> let me write it down for you. Let me summarize the entire <laughs> evil plot that I'm going on in my journal on today's entry, just just for fun. Just in case funsies. somebody happens to read it, other than Wait. me. I don't think John. Did you even did you steal from the? Uh... <laughs> did you steal from the uh, the bad guy? Bad guy. No, I, I stole from um, David. Cover your ears. I stole from David's buddies. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so you walk over to this pile of robes, and sitting kind of right on top of it, kind of tangled in with some of the the stuff, is a snake shaped medallion on like a necklace. And kind of putting two and two together from the main hallway, uh, this medallion looks like it would fit perfectly into one of those uh, S-shaped holes in the stone door in the main lobby. Oh yeah, that's right. There was a pu- there was a puzzle we had to deal <clears throat> with. Yeah, and then uh, sitting next to this pile of robes is the mage's staff, and it looks like it's kind of gone quiet. It's not glowing with purple magical energies or anything like that anymore. So I'm going to pick both up. I'm going to hold up the medallion and be like, hey, we can use this to get through that door. In the main hall. Probably. I mean, it is snake shaped. And then this thing's kind of cool. It's the only place we haven't looked. Uh, I would like to do an arcana check on this staff. Yeah. Sure, go for it. As uh, as you're looking this over, Chester's disembodied voice from behind you. Oh, that's pretty nice. What you got there? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Rolled a 17 for Arcana. Yeah, so the staff is definitely still magical. It still has some charges left of whatever psychic spell that it was channeling th- uh, from it. And uh, yeah, it, it could be a pretty, uh, pretty useful uh, weapon for someone who is adept in magical arts but it might require a little bit of training and attuning in order to uh to really get a good grasp of it cool i've been needing a new walking stick okay cool can i attach my like orb to it somehow i mean it already has an orb at the top of it that the spell channels through but you could probably figure out how to replace it at some point. Double orb. Yeah, or or yeah, somehow just tape orb. <laughs> duct tape <laughs> other <laughs> orb on. Just use the mending spell; it'll somehow fuse it together. <laughs> Which I think I have mending, just for the sake of that joke. Yes, I do. Um. Oh, I assume that you came out of your grade ape form, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're Sorry, just, I, didn't, we're just, I never we're actually just, said that I did. Just an I, ape I, walking a around. Of, like, three and four foot tall people talking with like a gigantic King Kong size. So I, I, I just, I just imagine because I believe with polymorph, you, you're not able to speak. You, you can only speak with that creature who's capable of speaking. So mm-hmm. I just imagine like he's sitting there explaining what the staff is to us, but it's really just a big gorilla going. <laughs> yeah, from, and from his point of view, it's like super detailed, like lecture on all the aspects of the staff. <laughs> For us, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's not much more else in this room. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys do? Are you guys gonna let this uh, arty fellow actually join you, like his his boss asked you, or? Yeah, he seems cool. Yeah, and he did yeah. the killing killing blow mm. on that. Yeah, he didn't like the killing blow. They kind of came out of nowhere. One of their dudes like saved my life. Mage's Guild sounds pretty <laughs> legit too. So, I mean, yeah, you guys would know who the Mage's Guild is. That they're kind of the authority in the city uh, that handles rogue mages and stuff. So, yeah. So, and as a uh, agent, I do get a. Uh, faction symbol so yeah you actually have a really it. cool shiny badge <laughs> um badge. question question about lore here what is the mages guild relationship with the clothia they're indifferent towards them okay okay they know they exist but the the clothia does more actual like 
crimes and not magic crimes. So they don't, it's like, that's not our jurisdiction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like forest rangers don't give a fuck if you speed on the highway. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Fair. Okay. Cool. All right. And I heard there's a, uh, a castle to be traversed and maybe we, uh, we all get to move on. We do the introductions later. Yeah, let's get this over with. My backpack's getting pretty heavy. I, I've been carrying it for a while. That's why. I've been carrying it a long time. My shoulders. <laughs> these shoulders are killing me. Oh, I'm sure... Uh... Yeah, your backpack is just gradually getting stuffed over the course of this adventure. I'm sure Everest wouldn't mind carrying it for you if you need a hand. Uh, I, I got it. I've, I, I've got it. I've definitely got it. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> you're looking, you're yeah. looking pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tired there, brother. It'd be I, no problem. I don't. And, I, I don't. Uh, I don't want to hold out a hand. Uh, Everest is like pouring blood out of his face and out of his armor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really, I really don't want to burden anybody with, you know, with with my uh, materialism here. It's it's okay, everyone. Let's let's get going. Eh, suit yourself. You guys gonna go back to the main hallway? Yeah. yeah. The, main, the main room, I should say, the the first floor room. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, Artie, as you uh, follow this group out of this room and, and back towards the main area of the castle. Hold on. Uh, you... Is that room that w- we're, we're going to have to walk past that room that's on fire? Is it still I, on I fire? Was just, I, was just getting, I was just getting to that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, as you pass by on the left, uh, you look into the second room. Uh, the, this middle room in this hallway, the door has completely burned off of its hinges and inside is just smoke pouring out of it. And you can kind of see like one or two uh, robed figures like on the ground, charred up and <laughs> And it just bloody. smells like roasted meat. <laughs> yeah, it, it smells a little intense as well. I, I don't know how that makes you feel about being in the company of these people, but there, there you uh, go. For I would like to... Uh, you guys uh, had anything to do with that? No, that uh, wasn't that, us. That was that was the bad guys. They lit this thing on fire. It wasn't us. He was there already when we got here. Oh, no, that was absolutely <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, well, the cultists weren't just going to let us kill their crazy <laughs> wizard boss. And they smelled delicious. Oh, my God. Oh, By the way, hey, that was... Um, uh, v- Vora, um... You're you're already kind of hard to digest just in appearances. Maybe don't let everybody know you're a psychopath. <laughs> hey, all because my culture and my culture we eat, you know meat from anything and you don't doesn't mean that I'm un- I'm a monster. Okay, I take great offense to that. I've got a question for you, mate. If another kobold was a uh, burnt in there, would you eat him? Yeah. Well, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> just like bald face as if that was the stupidest question he'd ever heard yeah yeah well i mean it for me it would depend on you know is it honey barbecue or teriyaki you know oh. <laughs> with a little bit of sweet and sour you know yeah what kind of condiments do we get with this person thing <laughs> not person <laughs> they're Jesus. no longer a person they're just meat mm, yeah <laughs> I, I think I'm going to be sticking closer to the dwarf then. <laughs> Which is funny because the dwarf is sort of life debt to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as you come back down the spiral staircase into the main foyer, from below in the uh, the castle's dungeon, uh, you can hear pounding against like metal from below and sort of snarling as well. Whatever was keeping those creatures below sort of uh, docile is no longer in effect. Oh, fun. Doesn't sound like they're out. Sounds like they're breaking or, or like smashing. They're trying to break out, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we um, have to go back that way? No. No, I mean, yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> you can turn around not. and you can let's bamf not. the fuck out of this castle if you wanted to. <laughs> No, let's let's not go that way, but use this skeleton medallion key. The snake medallion? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. It looks like it could fit into either one of the two holes. 
Oh shit, there's two. Oh yeah. Forgot about well, that. I, I put it in the left one. Sure. Uh, it, I mean, it fits perfectly. Um, and you see half of the runes on that door start to light up. And they suddenly change into common. It basically just says, uh, beware those who, and then it ends. Well, shit. <laughs> I Where pull the- it out of there and put it in the other one. See if we can read the rest of the door. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's do it. Okay, you pull it out. Uh, those yep. letters light up or uh, stop lighting up and fade back into the whatever language they were in before. You stick it in the other hole, and the words light up and change into common and say, "Here, there be monsters." Oh. So the full sentence is, "Beware those who enter here. There be monsters." Well, I don't yeah. know about you guys, but uh, that just kind of sounds like a challenge. Uh, m- maybe we should, uh, you know, go back, you know, rest up, uh, have a nice warm sauce or a milk. And we'll come back to this. I agree. Sounds like a warning sign. Yeah, like clearly we're not supposed to go in there. And I don't like breaking the rules. There's plenty bad out here. There's worse in there. Well, it doesn't matter all that much. We can't get in the store right now, anyways. True. Right, so, uh, warm saucer. Yep. Milk. Let's head on back. Let's go. All right. Turn yeah, around yeah, and start sounds good. marching out the way we came. You're going to leave the castle? Have we explored all the castle? Uh, you still have, you have the left spiral staircase going up. Oh. Oh, right. We only need to Just explore to one of them. We should check the other side of the castle. Oh, ever um, like, oh, sure. And spin on his heel and come right back. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone in agreement? Uh, we should take a long rest real quick, though. A long or- rest in this castle full of monsters? <laughs> yeah, this is a comfy couch right over there. You guys took a short rest earlier. I was going to suggest short rest so that uh, um, Chris can heal up a bit at the very least. Yeah. I know everybody gets something from a short rest. That's probably a, that's probably a smart idea. I get my health back, I think. I maybe get my health back. Let's see. Yeah, I get my health back. I'm done with that. I can also just spam a bunch of uh, healing on myself. Cool. Okay. Um, so you guys short rested. Chris, did you gain back? Did you roll your hit dice and gain back what you can? Haven't rolled yet. Okay. Gain 34 hit points. Hey, you're getting better already. Um, cool. And you guys were heading up the other set of stairs? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you head up the spiral staircase on the left this time, and you come to a very, very long hallway that easily stretches probably double the length of the hallway on the other side. And there are a bunch of tiny, like very small rooms coming off of each of e- each side of the hallway. The doors are open, it's easy to peer in, and it looks like it's just a room that's big enough for like a bed and somewhere to hang a robe, but nothing else are really in any of these rooms. Uh, they're all unoccupied, which is a little weird, but considering they're ramping up their plans, maybe all the other cultists are out and about or something no they all probably were just burned to death not all of them there's like there's like 40 rooms oh okay like 20 on each side and the hallway leads up to this large solid oak door right at the end of the hallway Uh, it is currently closed how many do you think we've taken care of so far uh at least like eight or nine those are slightly less favorable odds than I'd like. Well, I think the uh, the sneaky feline should peek his head into the door. See what there is. I agree. I agree. Off with you, little lad. All right. Well, I don't think that that door looks pretty heavy. So I think maybe one of you uh, stronger felines should open it. Oh, and from behind this door, you hear. Uh, 
that organ music that you've kind of heard in the background, it's even louder than it has been before. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, maybe one of you bigger guys should do it. This sounds kind of uh, ominous. Ominous. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll poke my sneaky head in, but one of you guys should open the door. No. Wait, which one of us is big and strong? I thought we were all tiny people. I mean, really, that's just the dwarf at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Let's do it. All right, I'm going uh, to... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to oh. try and sneaky... As sneaky as I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sneaky, sneaky time. Sneaky, sneaky time. <laughs> Crack the door open. Okay, uh, roll a stealth, uh, both of you. 23. Okay. Uh, I am also wearing heavy armor and at disadvantage, so... Oh, boy. Hell, yeah. And they both were seven, so I rolled a nine. Okay. Uh, Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ebris, uh, you maybe don't realize your own strength, or maybe this door just was a little loose or something. <laughs> I uh, roll the door open, it tears off the hinges. I mean, not quite. That probably would have been a one or a two. No, but you like you, you, you go to like kind of give it a little shoulder to kind of open it, because it looks really thick and heavy, and you kind of just like jerk it open like probably like a quarter of the way, causing some noise. And you hear the organ music stop. Mm. Uh, oops. I guess I'll throw the door the rest of the way open then. Oh! <laughs> okay. Um, so They're already up. looking our way. So this is the room that you end up seeing. It's a big square room. There's a bunch of pillars kind of spaced out throughout this room, uh, supporting the ceiling. Directly in front of the door, all the way on the other side of the room, uh, the room is probably about 60 feet across or so. You see an organ uh, that was playing, but now has stopped. The seat that is in front of it is pushed out away from it. Upon first observation, it doesn't appear anything is in this room, except for this organ. That's not good. And it is lit by a large chandelier hanging from the ceiling, but it's very dimly lit. And you said on first look, it appears that there's nothing in here. Correct. What about second look or third look? <laughs> uh, more of a perception check, you'd say? Sure. Why not? Yeah. You want one from everybody or? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, is everyone yeah, going to come into this room as you uh, as you make yeah. this check? May as well. Oh, yeah. So how's, yeah. a, how's a 13? What's a 13 getting me? You notice that the corners of the room are really thick with shadows. I'm a 24. I got a 19. I got a 6. He got no fuck. That's what he got. I got a one percent negative, or a mine, or I rolled a nat one with a one percent. Uh, <laughs> right? I mean, that's lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I'll come back to you on that one then. <laughs> Anyone who rolled nineteen or higher, you notice a lot of movement in the shadows that are in the corners of the room. Cool. Um like very fast movement kind of up and down like someone's like shaking or like kind of giddy with excitement it i think you would probably recognize this shaking as the same kind of shaking that those uh multi-armed creatures uh were doing in the tunnels mm -hmm. but anyone else who rolled lower than 19 you you just see you just notice a lot of the shadows in the corners of this room zach i'm gonna I'm gonna say at a one percent, you're just you're looking at the chandelier. You're just distracted. It's it it's shiny and cool. It's so pretty. Yeah. So we will say you are considered distracted. Uh, that so that's that's kind of what you see when you come into this room. Got it. Got it. Got it. I'm gonna say to the group then, because I at least recognize the uh, the little multi multi armed thingies. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, hey, you guys. I I think there's these, the multi-arm things that we saw back in the tunnel in this room. The little shaky things. What? Where? Everywhere. Just all yeah, around I, the I, room. I I think you're seeing things. There's nothing in this room. No, I, I'm not seeing things. Telling the don't, truth. Don't take that tone with me. Oh, um, Zoe, sorry. One more thing that you notice in this room. Uh huh. Hanging from one of the uh, pipes on the pipe organ. Like mm -hmm. the, the tallest pipe on this pipe organ. Hanging from there is one of those uh, snake-shaped medallions. 
Oh, okay. Oh, oh, you guys, you guys, there's a, there's another medallion on the on the organ thing. Okay, let's go get it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go. I'll just go climb up there and grab it. And uh, Chester's gonna waltz on up to the organ and begin attempting to climb the pipe. Sure. Yeah. So are you, are you gonna? Because the like your head probably comes right up to where the keys are. I'm gonna climb right over the keys, my friend. Okay. Cool. Very house cat. Yes, very house cat. Yeah, so you start... Are there any small objects uh, placed on the organ, like, <laughs> ornamentally? Uh, no. Can 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 there be, like, a, a statue of the seer or something, just so I can paw it over on my way up? <laughs> um, sure, you know what? Um, there we'll we say go. There's a, we'll say there's a little statuette of the whatever um, this father creature probably is. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I hop up on the keys on the organ. Uh, I see the statue. I paw it like gently over the edge of the organ and then I continue climbing up the pipe. Sure. Okay, so how's a nat 20, a 19, oh. a 17, and a 16, and a 7, and a 2 hit your AC? So everything above 16 hits, I need you to high or low me for the 16 and the rest misses. Uh, let's go high. High? All right. I'm rolling those percentile dice. 46. Okay. Um, so that was just two attacks then? So. Um, uh, I think it was more than two attacks because there's like a. Oh, no, sorry. It was three. It was three because the 17, there was a 17 as well. Thank you for your honesty. You're welcome. How's uh, 29 slashing damage? That hurts. And five psychic damage as one of these multi-armed creatures shoots out from the corner of the room in this shadow and just claws you six times with its arms. Holy uh, three of them, shit. Three of them connect. You are slashed up as this thing scurries into the shadows again. And he rolls to hide again. And yep, okay. Yep, so he jumps back into one of the shadows. You don't see where he went. Um, the rest of the party, you see this you see your friend Chester climb up onto this organ, and then all of a sudden he gets attacked uh, viciously, um, almost in like a swift movement, almost too fast to really yeah. see. It's just going to be like, see, I told you so, stupid. Ah, where'd he, where'd he go? Where'd he go? I, I didn't see him. And that's when you hear the laughter. <laughs> uh, how big is the room? 60 feet by 60 feet. Okay. Um, is he fully covered or three quarters covered? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Is there any, like, rocks on the ground? Uh, no. Just got these pillars here. You could probably break something off of one of these pillars if you want. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a little bit more time to figure out your reaction, but if not, we're going to roll initiative. Yeah, I'll just cast light on my shield. Okay. Uh, so your shield is lit, it, light, it, lighting up. My um, shield how, is lit. Yeah, lit <laughs> it is fucking it's lit. It's lit AF, bro. How far in did you guys move as Chester moved in to climb? Uh, just a little past the first set of pillars there. Yeah, yeah, like kind of just like not too far from the door still. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's roll initiative real quick. All right, let's get this going. I got a, an 11 for my initiative roll. I also got an 11. I got a 15. I got a 5. Wow, I have an 18. I got a rock. Uh, Sherman, I rolled my d20. It's a 9 on the table. It's a 17. All right, so you win. Why couldn't I have just gotten that 17 to start? Jeez Louise. Yeah, you guys kind of square up. You're ready for whatever's going to strike at you from the shadows. And uh, first in the order is one of these creatures. What a dick. What a douche. 23, unnatural 20, 16, <laughs> 19, 11, and 17 on it. Anything above 16 hits, which I think was all of it. Except for the 11, yeah. Yeah, except for the 11. Great. So 36 slashing damage. Ah, I'm going to die. 
and 49 psychic damage. Oh Jesus. my god! Holy shit! You guys, I'm at negative 22, so I'm down. Goodbye. I'm gonna die in this. <laughs> wow. TPK is a thing. Alrighty. Well, what luckily, f- this one that strikes out at it is not quite fast enough to get back into the shadows. Uh, he scurries up onto one of the pillars about halfway up. He's about 30 feet off the ground, and he just laughs as you see it fall. The next to the order is Artie. All right. How sturdy do these uh, pillars look? They actually look pretty pretty solid. Probably take a good okay. a good effort to kind of knock one down. All right, that's not worth it. I mean, they're supporting the room of a stone made castle, so. Yeah. Bro, I came in through this castle uh, in a in a statue. I know nothing. I know. It could be really old. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. I still see the one. Uh, yes, that's the only one you can see right now. All right. The only one you can see for now. And then how far is it from me? Um, it's probably pretty close to you, probably within like five, ten feet. Because y'all were still kind of grouped up when you came in. Okay. So I kind of suggest that we just, since we watched somebody just get one shot, we drag her out and we maybe pull a similar move to what you guys did earlier. Oh, set the room on fire? Something like that. Hold the door. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, they're kind of just hitting running us at, at their leisure. Is there anything in this room that's flammable? Uh, you could probably burn the wood on the organ. Yeah, but we need to get the the thing off of it. Well, John has it, doesn't he? No, he didn't. No. No, he the the reaction the reactionary attack came as he started climbing on the keys of the organ. Oh, okay. It would actually take some effort to climb up there because they're you know organ pipes. Okay. Well, I mean, we should destroy the organ just to get it to fall down so we can get the thing, I guess. That would also be a solution. There's an idea for you. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, John's there, so he can... I was going to say, if John's comfortable just grabbing it, then we can secure you and kind of get ready to bolt the door. Yeah. John has to make it, though, from across the room, too, though. I think he's pretty speedy. Yeah. I'm actually a slow boy. I got a movement speed of 25. I am a rogue, though, so I can essentially... You better be stealthy. Well, I can can double dash on my turn if I need to, so I can turn 25 into 75. Okay. Yeah. You're good. Which which would clear the room. So he can clear the room. Yeah. I also might have... Never mind. I don't have anything else special going on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit myself with uh, enlarge reduce, (laughs) and I'm going to go with enlarge. Yes, Are you sure you don't want to... You, you know Reduce is meta, right, David? Like, Reduce is the way to go. Um, I thought of a couple ideas there, but um, <laughs> disadvantage on everything that I essentially need yeah, is I, not... Yeah, it was a joke. ...the way to it go. Was, it was um, so a joke. Believe me, I thought about trying to sneakily shrink myself, mage hand my way across or something, and, like, dash back or misty step back or... Cast mage hand, um, ride your mage hand around. You can. Yeah, because I'm a gnome, so you get reduced to like tiny, <laughs> less than ten pounds, which and is long, enough yeah, for me. That would be fantastic. Pounds, I might need you to reduce me for reasons. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So I hit myself with enlarge, so I grow one size, and I get uh, extra one d4 on damage and advantage on all strength stuff. Nice. And so I'm going to run over to it, and I'm going to drag her back through the uh, doorway. Uh, sure. Or him, or it, or whatever you are. It's a mystery. Them. That's... <laughs> it's a mystery. Them it is. Yeah, I, w- I won't say you need a strength check to pick up it. I mean, it is a very tiny creature. Cool. So, yeah. And you're going to bolt out the door? I'm going to t- drag her out the door, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you make it. I'm going to say that's probably most of your movement if not all of it though no that yeah that's fair yeah uh that's my action that's my movement so that's my turn okay sounds good yeah next up is another creature <laughs> this is so scary vora uh-oh has a 10 14 
17, 8, 11, and 18. 18 is the only one that meets. Oh, shit. Um, let's go low. Everyone's been low on, rolling low today. The f- fuck AC do you have? Um, brace is a defense, bitch. Th- does those give you plus two? Yep. Motherfucker. 66. Fuck me running. Um, okay. Yeah, and he doesn't really get to hide at all. So he jumps out at you, and you with your small boy reflexes just seem to, like, almost like barrel roll to the side. Fuck yeah, bitch. Now he Wonder Woman styles blocks every attack with the bracers. <laughs> <laughs> with Toad's bracer. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Rich. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, and this thing scurries to that little green patch kind of uh, near I, where I his friend t- is. Can I attack of opportunity it? No, because this is part of its special uh, special movement that it oh, gets okay. with its with its flurry of claws attacks. Flurry um, of it, claws? Yes. Little bitch. Bitch. Next in the order is Vora, though, so... Cool. I'm going to chromatic orb his ass. Sure. Uh, is going to be a fire orb for a 27 to hit. Fuck. Yeah, that hits. Hits real good. That is 3d8 plus 3. 22. So 25 fire damage. Hey, good hit. Yeah. All right. He doesn't like that. And then I'm going to book it towards the door. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Chester. <laughs> okay. Is that your uh, turn? I, yeah, I moved 30 feet. Okay, sounds good. You are pretty much almost at the door. Like, you're just in front of those pillars uh, next to the door. Nice. Next is another one. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Another one. Yes. The ones that have attacked you all had six arms. There's one that's missing two arms. Aha! So where was this extra homie in our first encounter? Hey, someone's got to keep the music playing. <laughs> Eberus. Oh, Jesus. Uh, how's a 23, a 17, a 6, a 6, a 6, and a 7? What's up with everyone oh, getting I'm... these low ones? No, wait. Sorry. I rolled I rolled two extra. That's, so, that's what I'm saying. Ig- My ig- ass just got owned hard. <laughs> ignore two of those sixes because um, those were the last ones okay. I rolled. Well, the 23 hits. Okay. And I want to give him a little uh, welcome zap. Sure. As well. Uh, So he takes seven slashing damage and three psychic damage, uh, which I know you're all about. I love psychic. I love it when my brain gets (laughs) attacked. Um, My brain gets fried. And I want him to make a dex saving. A dex saving throw? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, how's a 22? Uh, nah, that beats it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he still takes half damage, so I'm going to zap him. I have enough dice here because for 13 rounded, there's a six and a half rounded up or down? Down. So. Down. Six damage, and I'd like to push him away, Tin. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you, you push him back. He kind of sputters around on the floor. We're going to say that that negates his bonus action hide so he's just out in the open chester you are up all right i guess i'm uh going for the key so i'm going to attempt to uh climb up and grab the key sure uh let's do either athletics or acrobatics your choice oh i am for sure doing athletics it's so high compared to my acrobatics okay that's that's a joke and sarcasm uh how's uh 15 for acrobatics uh yeah we'll say that passes uh yeah you 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 get up there pretty pretty nimbly all right and uh i I snatch the key sweet i am going to uh drop to the ground and use all of my movement and bonus action movement to get to the fucking door yeah you you bolt through the door and uh you are standing right next to your fallen best buddy who is laying next to uh Artie, who is kind of standing in front, protecting it. I'm gonna start slapping it on the side of the face. Wake up, buddy! Wake up! <laughs> Just wake up! Oh god! Oh god! I don't know what I do. I died. Oh, um, it. I actually skipped over you. You're supposed to be rolling a death saving throw. 
Yeah, how do I do it again? Just roll a d20, and if it's 10 or above, you have one success. One d20? Yes. Well, that seems kind of high for 10. Oh, I guess 10, half. 12. Okay, that's one success. That's a pass. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yay! Eberus, you are up. Right on. So the only people still in the room are me and Vora, right? Correct. I think Vora's small enough compared to me that I can just, like, pick him up, right? I weigh a whopping 30 pounds. So I'd say yes. Yeah, 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 easily. Yeah, you, your hammer probably weighs, you know, a good 10 <laughs> pounds, 15 pounds. So, yeah, I'm sure you could easily, yeah, lift a, lift a Vora. Lift a Vora. Sure. I'm going to do that because he should be right next to me if he's right in front of the door. Yeah, he's real close. I'm going to uh, pick him up and rush both of us to the other side of the I'm guessing that takes up my action. I can consider that part of your movement. Just grabbing Vora, That's you, you could do that while you run. That's not a big deal. Excellent. Yeah, I was just like football. Got him tucked under my arm. Got the classic yeah. pose going on. <laughs> and on the other side of the door, I want to spare the dying it and sure. then healing bird. Okay. For five points. <laughs> um, it, you shoot back up, resuscitated by your uh, your dwarf friend here as you look up into Chester's eyes and he is just a mix of scared and panicked. Okay. And then it's going to look up at Chester and be like, and just whisper because let's be real, I'm still only at like five. <laughs> like, you stupid cat. And then he's going to close his eyes again because he's tired. <laughs> okay. Is that your turn, Eberus? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Well, actually, if I do I have any movement left? I would say probably not. Like, busting into the door and, and yeah. doing all that, I would say no. Well, I'm at least going to let Vora go. Oh, sure. <laughs> Well, next in the order is one of these mangler dudes. Um, But he's all the way on the other side of the room. Hiding in the shadows. Lurking. He moves around a bit in the room. But this one was hidden, so he's good. Yeah, so the other two are going to take hide actions. Or the other one. Okay, cool. That was pretty high. So, Artie, you are up next. Probably just barricade the door unless someone's got something to throw in there. First... Chester is going to volunteer a smoke bomb to throw in the room. Smoke bomb. You, you just offer it up to, to Theodore? Yep. Sure. All right. Artie, I, I offer it to Artie. I don't know who this Theodore guy is. God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> God, I need to stop doing that. Yeah, you're going to offer it to Artie. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can, like, blow it up somehow. I don't have anything cool enough. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll throw a smoke bomb in there and then I'll barricade the door. Or take a ready action if someone wants to throw, like I said, throw something or cast something. I can throw another fireball. Fireball? Does anyone know grease or anything? Some way to help spread that? Oh, that'd be so dope. No. Oh, if only. No, I could stone shape the door closed, though. <laughs> the door is made of wood. But, like, I could probably, like, form a slab of stone up from the block underneath it, like, blocking the doorway. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, okay, yes. That's very clever. Okay, yeah. Josh is like, shit. No, shit. I mean, but, my, my, I my mean, TPK's we... done. <laughs> I was, I was but, not going for a TPK, but I knew it was a possibility. <laughs> but I don't think we have any way to, like, burn up the room. Okay, well, we can just lock them in. I, um, I think like I, I kind of vote for the stone shaping the door shut. I think that's yeah. the uh, the best way to go here. The yeah, one question I have, though, is were there any other doors or windows in there? There were two windows to the right that looked out into the cave. Okay, damn. Well, I vote that you try and stone shape the window shut as well, but uh, I'll settle for the door. I need touch. Yeah, that's fair. And I've only got the one spell slot. Gotcha. I'm down for doing that, but I go almost last in turn queue. I mean, I'll barricade it until you do. That's fine. Let's do it. Cool. Okay. So, Artie, you're going to basically be holding this door shut. Yeah, and I will throw that smoke bomb in there just to help disorient them. Sure. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it creates kind of a a fog of smoke that 
kind of s- disperses through the room. Perfect. Up next is the is another mangler. It moves towards the door, but can't quite get there yet. Uh, it, you are up. I don't really have anything to do. Can I do something at five? Five hit points? You're alive. Yeah. You're alive. Yeah. yeah. You can do pretty much everything. You're just... I'm going to keep my eyes closed, pretend I'm still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> just just like, uh, they can take. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, after that is Vora. Vora's going to shoot a firebolt at the uh, at the organ and set it on fire. So you're going to you're going to basically grab the door handle from from Artie open the door and just blast it real quick. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to open the door like a crack so I can do that. Sure. Um, I'll let that be a free action. That's fine. Uh, open the door real quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he opens the door and there's a big cloud of smoke forming inside this room uh, from the smoke bomb. Uh, go ahead and roll with disadvantage your attack roll. That is hard. 14. Okay. Yeah, we'll say that connects with the with the organ and it uh, it starts kind of kindling a little bit. Add more real smoke. Okay, now close it. And you hear kind of a snarl come from the room, like, meh. Meh. Is a cloffy in there? <laughs> no, definitely not. I mean, they could be. They're nothing but claws. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these guys would be the kangs <laughs> of the cloffy. <laughs> Nah, they don't have enough style. Artie, after he shoots that in, you close the door and you start hearing some clawing on the other side of the the door. Oh, good. <laughs> and he rolled a nat 20. Uh, so you see one of these claws actually shoot through the door um, oh, and shit. start kind of grasping at you guys viciously. Is it reaching low enough? No, it's, it's, it's up high, <laughs> but it's, it's reaching. I mean, you know, also, uh, Artie actually would be high yeah, enough I because he's so. Um, oh, that's right. So, yeah, but but it but it misses your head. It, it, it misses your body. So it's not actually getting you. Is this like a literal Hodor situation? <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't thought of that, but sure. There's a giant dwarf holding the door. That's what you think. The second this goes south, I hit expeditious retreat and outrun all of you bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that one's turn. Uh, Chester, you are up. Yeah. So uh, we just have uh, our dwarf, fr- or yeah, our uh, gnome friend on the door, right? Everyone else is kind of backed away. Uh, I believe so. Yes. And uh, I, I, we still have the one like claw coming through the door. Correct. I'm going to use that to guesstimate where the body of this creature is, and I'm going to run full force rapier first into the door, aiming for the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, okay, I was going to give you disadvantage, but you can technically, you, you're, you're a smart cat. You can figure out where someone's body is. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'll just say roll regular. Oh, sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a good roll. It's going to be a 21 to hit. Yeah, okay. Um, go ahead. Roll damage. Yeah. Nice. 12 damage. Okay. Um, yeah, this thing uh, shrinks away from the door, and the, there's there's now a hole in it. You can kind of see into it. There's a bunch of smoke that's starting to pour out of it, um, and you kind of just see this fast-moving uh, creature behind it snarling. Yeah, take that. Uh, Eberus, Mr. Stonoath. He's going to... I make good on that oath. I'm gonna step <laughs> forward and say, uh, "Clear the door." And he's gonna fucking, I guess, I guess it's just gonna be Full Metal Alchemist. He's gonna fucking slap his hands onto the stone concrete and just shoot up a, a stone wall. Hell yeah! Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to decide exactly where to place it though. Just like have the wooden door crushed and replaced by the. The stone wall. That wouldn't be yeah, too bad. That yeah. sounds pretty dope, actually. Is that guy's arm still sticking through? No, it, it jerked back after. Uh, I I, after I regret going the for nuts. the the nut shot now because having its arm like stuck in your stone wall would have been so much cooler. But. <laughs> <laughs> C'est la vie. 
Okay, yeah, that works. Um, so you're just going to bring this stone slab just kind of straight up into where the, the wooden door is supposed to be? Yep. Okay, um, I just need you to make a dexterity saving throw real quick. To see if you avoid some of these splinters. That's <laughs> shrapnel. Yeah. Boom. Since I am right next to him, can I help protect him with my shield? Sure. Uh, go ahead yeah, and roll but... with advantage. Alrighty. That is 15. Okay, yeah, we'll say that's good enough. Excellent. Yeah, the shield comes up and just covers you from the splinters as this room is now sealed with a five-foot-thick uh, stone slab where the door was. And you hear uh, kind of this, like, gnarled, like, and, and clawing against this, <laughs> this stone from inside. There, there, there you go. You solve my mangler puzzle. Thank you for listening to our show. For more content, including world maps, cast info, or additional podcasts, check out our website, oneuppodcasts.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at AreWeDeadYetPod and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash AreWeDeadYetPodcast. Intro and outro music composed by Salty Dog Company. Find them on SoundCloud by searching for Salty Dog Co. Spell dog... D-A-W-G Background music and ambience provided by TabletopAudio.com under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. TabletopAudio.com really brings your games to life and is perfect for both adding in that background music to a podcast or for live sounds during gameplay to increase immersion. Check them out at TabletopAudio.com the organ music used in this episode was Toccata and Fugue in D minor, performed by Paul Pittman, composed by Johann Sebastian Bach, provided under a public domain dedication. Cover art by Ashley Steinke. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.